Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about why I believe, again, if you are not already rich and you want to turn your money into the most amount of money possible, I don't think you have a choice but to view cryptocurrency as a big part of your asset allocation investment <laughs> because it has the best potential for growing. And I'm going to break down today why I'm going to go through each asset class and break down the pros and cons. And then you get to make your own decision, right? Not financial advice. Everybody make their own decision because the truth of the matter is every day you don't understand about investing means it's an extra day that you have to work in your life. Because what is retirement? Retirement is just a time when you have enough money to fill out the rest of your days of your bills, right? To be able to say, all right, today, if I stop working, I know the rest of my life, I won't need to work anymore because I will have this money to cover it, right? So with crypto, I think that's the best opportunity you're going to have to make that happen. And again, you know, not financial advice, but the truth of the matter is if you invested today, dollar for dollar in each asset class, which do you believe is going to grow the fastest? And again, once you listen to all of what I'm talking about, you will be able to make your own decision. But I, I really do believe there's not much other decision than crypto if you have if you're just starting out. And I'll, and again, let's we'll get into it. But first, let's start with our sponsors. The first sponsor, of course, is Retire Your Bills. Go to retireyourbills.com, take the free training at Retire Your Bills. We teach people how to use their bill money, the same money they use to pay their bills every month to also invest with the same money, use the same money twice, learn how to do it at retireyourbills.com. Second sponsor is Metabronx. Metabronx is our startup accelerator program, which is located in the Bronx and other places. But um, Metabronx is a startup accelerator where we help startups raise funding. But then at the same time, we bring youth from the community and give them internships, paid internships at the startups that we help advise. So if you want to help us keep that alive, you go to metabronx.com slash invest, and maybe you donate a couple bucks to help us keep that program alive. And then finally, we have Dot Hip Hop Partners. Dot Hip Hop Partners, I mean Dot Hip Hop, I'm part of Dot Hip Hop Partners, but we'll get into that another time. Dot Hip Hop is a way to buy the donate the uh, domain name within the hip hop space. So if you are a rapper, a music industry person, and you want to have a domain name that's not just com, you can buy whatever your name is, dot hip hop, and it will land on a website and it will also be a crypto wallet. So check that out. Go to get dot hip hop to buy your, your dot hip hop name. So now let's get into it. What are the main asset classes? The most understood is and, and most used actually is real estate, right? Real estate is where the most millionaires are created. But again, pros and cons, but I'm going to go through all the asset classes that um, people know and some don't know. Real estate, stock, bonds, precious metals, and crypto, right? So these are the, the main asset classes that people use to grow their wealth. Let's go over each one. Real estate. Everybody knows you buy real estate, you either live in it or you rent it out. It grows in value every year. You get tax breaks for, for buying it. But here's why I say crypto, if you have to go crypto versus real estate, crypto has the upper hand, in my opinion, depending on what type of investor you're trying to be. But the truth is, to even get real estate, you have to already kind of have money. Yes, there's ways of getting around having money you can use all kind of loans, no percent down, all kind of things. But the truth is you got to have good credit. So if you're starting out and you don't have good credit yet, you don't have a good job yet, they're not going to give you a loan. I don't care what it is, right? So to buy a house to either rent, I mean, rent out to other people or to live in, you have to have a good job and you have to have good credit, right? And then however much you can put down on that house, the better off your real estate investment will be. But again, it's not easy for everybody to do that. Not everybody has good credit. Not everybody has a good job. And not everybody has a down payment. So this is why I'm saying if you're not already rich, 
starting out with real estate is not easy. You got to create all those things. And yes, you should. Everybody should do all those things. But let's say you were starting out today and you didn't have anything. I don't think real estate is easy for people to start. And I, But I again, I, I do give pro. Everyone should own real estate where they live and rental. But again, not easy for everyone to do. Now let's look at stocks. Stock, yes, stock market, everybody can access it. Everybody can buy whatever company they want. They can buy very little shares of it. You don't need to buy a full share of Apple. You can buy $10 of Apple. So pro, very easy to get into. Then nobody's going to check your credit. Nobody's going to check your, um, your, um, your job. You can buy a stock and hold it. The con to stock is you have to sell it to reap the reward. Some stocks give you what's called dividends. But here's why I'm saying if you're not already rich, starting out with stock, I don't know why. Let's say today I wanted to make a certain amount off of my Apple stock. I would need, I would need to have a lot of Apple stock because Apple stock will give you like five cents a share something like that. Uh, you know, you can look it up, but they give you five cents a share per quarter. So every three months, they'll give you five cents per Apple share you have. So how many Apple shares are you going to need to have to make a living being retired, right? So let's say your expenses when you're retired are 50K a year, which I doubt that's going to be able most people to live in America making 50K a year. At, in 30 years, 20 years, but let's say it's 50K. How many shares of Apple do you need to have? So you need to have millions of dollars of shares of Apple to even make 50K a year off the dividends. Or you need to buy it and hope it goes up in value and then sell it. And guess what happens when you sell it? You got to pay taxes. So let's say you were lucky enough to buy Apple and it doubled in value. So let's say you were buying Apple your whole... um. 20s and 30s for 20 years you bought apple stock you were lucky enough to buy the right stock that's another big thing most people buy what's called etfs which is more than one stock bundled um or the s p 500 which takes the top 500 companies in america and when you buy one share of that you're buying all the top companies the, again the problem and, and these and uh s p 500 if you buy specific ones they also give you dividends but again, they're very little. They're like cents per share. So you need a lot of them to be able to really make a good amount of money. But then when you want to use them, you got to sell them and pay taxes. There are ways to borrow off of your home or your real estate property and stock though. We'll get, we'll get into that pro and con later. But let's just take the, the main um, asset classes and break them down. So first we have, what's up, man? Thank you, thank you. Um, so let's say now we go to bonds, what bonds are. So we went real estate, we went stock, and now we're going bonds. Bonds are buying basically the stock of a country. So in America, America's probably going to be around for a while. So what, what, what investors do is they buy bonds, which means you're lending money to America and America gives you interest on that. So you can put whatever amount of money, and they will, they're willing to give you a certain amount percent of interest because basically you're lending money to America. And the idea is if you think the stock market is going to go down or the, the real estate market is going to go down, if you put it in bonds, you definitely going to make some type of interest. The, the con is, is that interest more than inflation? So I believe the current bond market gives you 4% interest. So let's say you put a hundred grand and you got a hundred grand, you put it into bonds. You're going to make $4,000 a year. The problem is they're saying inflation is above 4%. So you're not really gaining your, your money's going down in value. If you are making 4% interest, but the inflation is five, six, seven, eight, I think it's even higher than that. Personally, of course they're saying a number, but I think it's even higher. So that's the con to, to bonds, right? Like, yeah, there's a there's a no matter what interest. And again, certain bonds in certain countries, they don't work out, right? America, we believe America is going to be around, so it makes sense. But if you bought 
bonds in like Argentina or something like that, and that government ran out of money, your bonds are screwed, right? So this is where, again, where you buy bonds. We're in America, so luckily, you know, hopefully, there's another thing. It's not guaranteed that America is going <laughs> to be around forever either, right? So there's always pros and cons. So bonds were like a safe haven for a lot of investors. They put their money in bonds and a lot of portfolios used to be stocks and bonds. You know, you hear that stocks and bonds because stocks are more risky, more volatile, bonds are more safe. So if you put your money in stocks and bonds, your portfolio is a little safer, right? But I just told you the cons. The cons are if the interest doesn't outweigh the inflation number, you're pretty much losing money, right? And then oh, I don't. I think there's a term of how long the bonds are for too. I don't think you can just buy a bond and sell it tomorrow. I think you got to keep it in there for a certain amount of time. I've never bought them, but um, I have been researching all these different asset classes to to make sure my content is is right because I know for me what I see is crypto. All right, so I did stocks, I did bonds, I did real estate, I didn't do precious metal. So what's precious metal? Gold silver, copper, there's different metals you can buy. You'll hear a lot of people say, I only trust gold. I'm buying gold. I buy gold. Pros of gold is gold has been around literally since the beginning of time, right? So it's not going anywhere. It's not going to disappear from the face of the earth. It's been what's called a store of value. So most of the world's money initially was started from gold, right? So we all, we, I mean, our ancestors used to trade by using gold. Um, they made coins, they made bars, but then it became kind of barbaric to be walking around with gold to pay for things, so they turned it into bills. So now we don't really use gold day to day anymore, but still, if you hold gold, it has a value, and you could sell it, you could make jewelry, you could do things with it, right? You could, it, it could, it's part of our cell phones. Right. There's different things you can do with gold that give it value and it holds the value. So if you put again, let's take that 100K number. I think I'm going to take the 100K number between all the asset classes in this conversation to make you think through, again, the best option to grow. And again, that means you have 100K, which most people don't I have 100K to just drop on an investment today. OK, so with gold, if you bought, let's say I think gold is like. Fifteen hundred dollars uh, um, an ounce or something like that right now. So let's say you bought hundred thousand dollars worth of gold. Now you got these bars, and if you needed to, you could take these bars somewhere and sell them. Let's say they go up to two thousand dollars instead of fifteen hundred, just like a coin would or a stock would. You can go into a place that buys gold and sell it and get that five hundred dollars more than you paid. Roll we'll taxes on that five hundred because you made money. Just like with a stock, with anything, anything you make money on, you owe taxes. The con, has anybody on this live stream ever seen a place where you can buy gold? Has anybody ever seen somebody sell gold? It's not easily done, right? So I remember right when the pandemic hit, my dad hits me. He's like, we should buy gold. He's like, can you find out where to buy gold? And I was like, all right, so I'm Googling. I find a place. They shut down because it's COVID. So because it's physical, you have to go somewhere, get it, and store it. And that's a con to me. Like, all right, let's say you have $100,000 worth of gold. You're going to want that in your house? Like, just sitting? Like, where are you going to put, like, a bar of gold? Uh, uh, I mean, a bunch of bars of gold somewhere in your house? I don't think it's practical for most people. I think, yes, rich people, it makes sense. You have, you have, you know, safes and, and warehouses. There are places that you can pay them to store your gold. And it becomes, again, like just numbers on a ledger that they say, oh, you got bought $100,000 of gold. It's going to be in this warehouse for you. Trust me, it's there. And whenever you need it, we'll sell it for you. So I don't really like that. That, that doesn't really sound like a pro to me. Again. I really would like feedback from anybody else. Of course, there's people who believe in, in their asset class and they really focus on it. So to me, precious metals, how often do you see people using precious metals? I get it. 
that is it is a thing from historical past and there's limited amount of it. But here's another thing. We don't live, we live on, um, in a, on one planet, but there's gold in other places in the solar system. They already found an asteroid with gold in it. So if that asteroid, they're able to go to it and mine the gold off, the, off that asteroid, that means there's more gold on the market and the value goes down, right? And that's already, they already saw, um, they already have one that they could go to. Yes, it takes years, but it's possible. So it's not as finite as you think, right? Like right now it's finite because they find it, they dig it up around the world. They The, the amount they say, they, they find about 3% new gold a year. So again, inflation, the inflation of gold is lower normally than the inflation of other things. So that's a pro. The problem is there's more gold out there. And eventually one day there's going to be more gold. And then what's that inflation number going to be? And then to me, the kind of usage, like, are you going to walk around with bags of gold to use it? And then when you want to sell it, you got to find somewhere to sell it and bring it and hope it's not closed because it's COVID or something like that. So I just didn't, didn't think that was a good option for me. I just don't think, I think, yeah, maybe before, or if I was rich enough to want to have something where it's stored, protected, makes sense. But if I, if I wanted to send, all right, let's say I wanted to pay somebody in another country. Am I going to send them gold? No, like this is crazy. You're going to have to convert it, sell it, then send them a wire transfer to whatever country. And that's crazy. If I wanted to ship the gold, that would cost crazy money, right? So it's not a form of exchange, it's a store of value. And again, can it really grow a lot? I don't really see how it's going to grow a lot. It's not going to double and triple value out of nowhere. What will make it do that? It's been around for so long. There's nothing that's going to really make it grow. If anything, it's going to keep the value. So if the dollar goes down in value, stocks go down in value, crypto go down in value. The idea is that gold will keep that $1,500 at least close to it more than anything else. And then what happens is, let's say the dollar goes down in value a lot. You still got the gold. You can turn it in for the same dollar amount that it was worth. And now the value of the dollar is down, so you would get more purchasing power. So, okay, we went over stock. We went over bonds. We went over real estate. We went over precious metals. There's one extra one that I, you know, some people have said to me that I'm like, hey, might as well talk about it. Diamonds, stuff like that, right? The crazy thing about diamonds and my mom. So my mom worked in the diamond district since the day I was born. My mom used to always tell me this. She used to say, look, all these people out here buying jewelry and stuff, this is all made up value. She's like, my boss has a vault of diamonds. That he just keeps off the market to make the value of diamonds higher. And I, you know, I just never got into jewelry because my mom worked in jewelry and I was, she told me, she's like, this is all worthless. Like you, you, you know, I, I get paid from this, but I'm telling you right now, if they, they just go into, and, and my boss is only one of the guys doing this. There's many people doing this around the world. There's more diamonds than people in America. Basically, what, what I heard was, and this my mom didn't tell me this, I've heard it over time. There, if every man, woman, and child had a bag of diamonds, there's still more in America, there's still more diamonds than that. So what's the value? The way they create the value is they keep it off the market. They hide the diamonds. And when they find diamonds, they store them away so only a certain amount of diamonds are ever circulating. So people think they're more valuable, but they're not. They just fake value based on scarcity, right? So when you think about that, you start to understand like what makes value, right? What makes in it something worth investing in? This is where crypto looked at all those asset classes and developers, coders said, all right, what is the next version of all those asset classes? And how can we take all the bad out of those asset classes so this new version doesn't have any of the crazy things that we see in those? So here's what these freaking geniuses came up with. They said, all right, 
what if we can make it so it could hold its value by being scarce? It can be traded all around the world instantly, and you don't need to store it anywhere physically because who the hell can do that? How could a poor person in this poor country store gold? So what did they do? They created the first crypto, which is called Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin has a limited supply of coins that can ever be minted. So it's not like gold where there's an asteroid somewhere where we're going to find more Bitcoin. They coded it into the blockchain. It's only going to ever be, I think it's 21 million Bitcoin ever. So the scarcity is real. It's not like diamonds where they're just hiding the diamonds to fake the scarcity, right? Then we look at the the um, store value thing with gold, right? Which why I said, where the hell are you going to store it? Now it just lives on the blockchain in a digital ledger. And as long as you have your password, you can hold it, right? And if you lose your password or somebody else finds your password, they can take your gold. Yes. So it's up to you to protect that password of wherever you have your crypto. You can keep it on exchanges, but as you've seen with FTX and stuff like that, that can have issues as well. So bonds, bonds are buying into a country, right? The, the value of the country growing 4% or whatever a year, they're going to you bought, you're lending money to the country so they can do what things they want to do. So they give you interest. The crazy thing about Bitcoin is it is like its own country, right? And instead of you letting Bitcoin borrow your money, when you buy it and people, other people hold it or want to buy it from you, it grows in value much more than 4% a year. On histor Historically, it's grown 100% on average since the day it was born. It was born around 2009, 8, something like that. Every year, it's grown 100%. I just told you bonds give you 4%. Real estate grows about 3% a year. Gold, they find 3% more gold a year. Um, stocks, the stock market historically or overall has grown 8 to 12% on average a year. So real estate, stock, bonds, precious metals. I told you about gold, 3%. I don't know every, every but again, I told you about diamonds. There's more diamonds than, you know, we can all handle, but they're being hidden. Fake scarcity. With Bitcoin, is real scarcity, right? So, okay. Now, if you had 100 grand to put into each of these, and I'm just talking about Bitcoin. I'm not talking about Shiba Inu and, you know, Dogecoin, stuff like that. I will just talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum. For now, there's more. There's good ones that, you know, you can be involved in too. But again, none of this financial advice. I'm just showing you the basis, the, the, the breakdown of the main ones, right? So Ethereum, Ethereum takes another idea. It says, what if instead of there's a being a limit, what if every time somebody uses Ethereum, some of it disappears? So not only is there a finite supply, it starts to lose the amount of that supply over time based on people using it. So what happens? real scarcity, right? Because if, I don't know how many Bitcoin, how many Ethereums they are, but whatever, let's say there's a hundred million big um, Ethereum and every, every year of people using it, 1 million disappear. So now over time, there's going to be less and less and less of it. So the more you have, the more valuable it becomes. So that's a different idea than Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin has the scarce set limit. Ethereum has a diminishing over time limit. So it's like kind of running out, actually. That's interesting, right? It's different than the the other asset classes I was talking about. And then we, let's take the the an asset class I didn't talk about: dollars, the the currency of your country. I'm in America right now, so I'm talking about dollars. What just happened with dollars? I have somebody who said it on my on one of my um channels. He said, "I'd rather have dollars because I know." I can use them and they're not going to just disappear on me like crypto. What just happened during the COVID, um, the COVID uh, uh, virus, 
the government of America printed up 40% new dollars. What does that mean? Think about what I just said with diamonds and gold and stuff like that. Imagine there's a certain amount and now 40% more just comes online and is out there. That lowers the value of whatever you made 40% of. They just did that with the dollar. So yeah, you didn't lose it. They didn't take it out of your hands, but they made it disappear in value without taking it out of your hands by printing up 40% more of them. That's like if I told you there's only going to be 20 million Bitcoin, but then later we print up 8 million more Bitcoin. No, actually 40%. Yeah, 8 million more Bitcoin. And you thought it was going to keep its value because we only have 20 million of them. And now 8 million more hit the market. That's going to lower the value of your Bitcoin. The, the dollar just did that. And what's happening is countries all around the world are starting to feel that impact. And if you look, look up the news of what's happening in Lebanon. In Lebanon, the money's value is shrinking so fast that people are trying to get into the banks. The banks won't let them in. So they're robbing the banks for their own money so they could turn it into something else other than that dollar because they want to take it away from the value that's shrinking, put it into something else, gold, crypto, real estate. I don't know. It depends on what it is because you can't just buy a real estate property like this. If you live in Lebanon, you don't want real estate everywhere. Real estate makes sense in certain places. That's another con to real estate. I'll give you a mansion in uh, a desert. Would you want it? You know, of course not. Right. So real estate also has a location that's a con. It could be a pro, but it's also a con because what happens if in that in that location you have that real estate, they raise the taxes on you. Property tax. Now every year you gotta pay more to have that property. So now are you covered? Here's another big thing about why I'm talking about retirement so much. Let's say you are lucky enough to have a paid off home by the time you retire. Your property tax is still going to grow every year though. So eventually you're probably going to have to sell that home because you're not going to make enough money to cover the property tax. If you're living in a place for 30 years and the property tax is growing, but your income is the same. You're going to have to end up selling that. So this is where real estate also has downsides, especially when you come to the later years of your life. This is why they say when you retire, you should be downsizing as much as possible to make sure your, your money grow, goes as long as possible for you. But this is why I'm telling you crypto again. Here's what crypto can do that none, none of these other assets can do. You can leverage the crypto. You can leverage, and by leverage, I mean you can borrow off of the value. So let's go again, go through each asset class. Start out with uh, real estate. Let's say you have a, a home. It's worth, uh, let's make the math easy. Most people don't have this, but let's say a million dollar home. The government, I mean, the banks will let you borrow up that home. Again, if you have a good job and you have good credit. So when you retire, are you going to have a good job? No. You know, your credit, hopefully you're paying your bills. So the bank, when you retire, is not going to lend you money. And I've seen it with multiple people already. People that have homes paid off or very close to it, not able to borrow off of their property because they don't have jobs. So, okay, you can do it, but later in life when you need it, of course, there are other things you can do. You can create different income strategies where you look like you're making money. But this is all like baseline stuff. It's really hard. And I have people that, I, that I'm dealing with right now that they can't. They, they literally have to sell the house, pay taxes, because they can't borrow off the, the value of the home they have. It's a con. Stocks. You can borrow your stocks, but you can only borrow a certain percent. I've heard 20 to 50% is what they let you borrow. And the second, if the market drops, they take your entire they take your entire portfolio. That's what I've heard. I haven't done it myself, but I have been looking into it to make sure I understand every part of this. Bonds. I don't think you can borrow your bonds. I should look that up. I don't think so, though. Precious metals. Mm, I don't think so either, but maybe. 
Yo, you know what? The pawn shops are pretty much that, right? You give, <laughs> you give the pawn shop the, the 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 amount they lend you the money, and then if you don't bring back however much plus interest, they keep it. So yeah, you can do it, but again, pawn shops have high interest rates, right? So probably not the best thing to do. So I get stock, bond, real estate, precious metals. Now crypto. Check out what you can do with crypto. In a pawn shop, nobody's asking you for credit. They, you know, they got your value. They got the, they got more value than they gave you, right? So if, if you bring, let's say you got a bar of gold and it's worth fifteen hundred dollars, and you say, hey, I'm gonna give you this. Can you lend me a thousand? They're gonna say, yeah, but you're gonna have to pay this interest. You borrow less than the the value, so they don't lose, right? If they, if you never come back and you keep the thousand dollars, they keep your bar of gold, right? With real estate, you're usually borrowing more than the value or a little bit less. But again, the bank will take your property, right? But again, they still they still have stipulations that you need to meet or they're not going to give you the money. With a pawn shop, I actually never did it, but I'm guessing there's not much stipulation. Give me the thing and that's it. With crypto, there's zero stipulations. You put your crypto, you can borrow from it, you get the money instantly, and you can do what you want. The one risk is the market is volatile. Same with the stock market. So if the market comes down and the value of your loan is too high, they'll take your crypto. But here's where, again, if you do it right, you can buy and sell crypto day to day so you can you can protect your loan. And this is the stuff I've been teaching people how to retire your bills. You can protect your loan in a second. You say, you know what? Let me just sell... My loan is getting close. Let me sell $100 into stable coins to protect my loan. And that's what you got to do. A couple button presses, you protect your loan. And of course, I'm making a bot that does that automatically. It's already doing it for me personally, but it's not ready for the public yet. But again, so what that means, this is where it's so powerful and why I'm saying if you're not already rich, this is where I believe most people are going to be able to grow their wealth. Compound interest. If you don't know what compound interest, it means the money grows because the interest is added to it every year. So let's say you had $1,000 and there was 10% interest every year. First year, you have 1000 you made 100 Next year, you get interest on 1100 The next year after that, you get interest on 1100 plus that interest. And you keep doing that year after year after year. And what happens is after, with the 10% number, after 10, 20, 30 years, you start to create this value that, that goes very up. And I'll show you a, a compound interest calculator. But what happens is most people end up having to sell so they don't take advantage of the compounding interest. Because if you're selling, you're not compounding, right? So if... I, and I'm gonna again. I'm gonna show you. But with crypto, you can take advantage of the compounding and not sell, right? So, and I'm I'm gonna break it down. But that is the major key. You need to be able to invest in something over time, many many years, and not have to sell it whenever you need money. And if you start doing that with crypto, here's another big thing. I just I told you before. Real estate grows on average three percent a year. Stocks, 8 to 12. Bonds, it depends on that year and what the deal is. But right now, I believe it's about 4%. Precious metals, just gold. They find about 3% new gold a year, but it tends to hover around the same price. Crypto, Bitcoin alone, has grown 100% a year on average. Ethereum, which is the only two I'm going to talk about right now, have grown has grown 200% a year on average. So we got three real estate, four bonds, eight stock, three precious metal, 100 crypto. And now, what did I tell you about the first four? If you want to borrow off your real estate, you better have a job. If you want to borrow off your stocks, you can only borrow 20 to 50%. And you most likely have to sell it. And if you have a 401k, they actually force you to start selling it at a certain age. 
So you can't even do what I'm saying. At a certain age, the government starts forcing you to sell it and pay taxes. With crypto, you never really have to sell it. You just keep borrowing off of it. And it's growing at 100% right now. So let's say it's going to take time to get to a stable 8 to 12 percent like stock do you know how long it took stock to get to eight to twelve percent hundred years and stock again was not available to the whole world you had to be rich you had to have a broker and you pretty much had to be in america or have some type of america connection to buy into the stock market until 10 years ago so again there was a limit of how much trading could happen Crypto, everyone around the world, all 8 billion people can buy and sell crypto 24 hours a day. Do you not think eventually more people will get into that? Probably. I do. I definitely think it's going to happen. Again, who knows how fast? Even if it takes 20 years, though, the more you put in right now, once all of those people put money in, it makes the value of yours higher right so again if you think about real estate if i have the best real estate in the world manhattan broadway manhattan times square uh wall street how hard is it to get that real estate you need millions and millions of dollars amazing credit right like it's crazy let's say you wanted to do that though it's available but you need to have that money most people don't right Okay, stocks. Let's say you want the blue chips, the Amazons, the the, the, the Googles, the, the top companies. They're already up there. They're not going to double in value anytime soon. They maybe double every 10 years, maybe. Bonds, 4%. It's not going to do a lot, but it's something. Precious metals, more of a keep the value than a growth. Crypto. You don't need to you don't need to be anywhere. You can take this anywhere with you. You don't it, let's say let's say you got a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin today, and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna move to Europe. You don't gotta take these bars of gold with you. You don't have to sell your real estate property, pay taxes. You just get on a plane and take your hopefully ledger. Or cold wallet, cold storage wallet with you. And you got your Bitcoin. You're in another country now. You borrow off your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, whatever. And you live your life in that country. Versus stock. You got it. You know, you could take it with you too. But again, you got to sell it kind of. Like, and you're going to have to borrow. If you want to borrow, it's very limited. With crypto, you can borrow up to specific coins. It changes. Bitcoin, you can borrow 75%. Ethereum, you could borrow 80%. Stock, you could borrow 50% maximum. Stock grows 8 to 12% a year. Crypto has grown 100, 200% a year. When I talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum specifically, what? So now let's add, let's, let's do the math. Grows faster on average. More flexible, more accessible to everybody on the planet. You can borrow off of it without anyone asking you anything. When you put those things together, I don't see how, and it just reminds me of the internet. I remember very early on having conversations like this about the internet and people being like, eh, I don't know about that. And I'm like, okay. Now we all use the internet all day. That's why you're watching me. 10 years ago, I couldn't do what I'm doing right now. This To do this in 10 years ago, it would have cost me $100,000 a month to set up all this stuff that I'm using right now. And I'm maybe paying 50 bucks a month for all of it. Or if you had internet access, let's say 150, let's say 200 just to make the math easy. Versus 10 years ago, I would have had to have a studio. I would have had to have an internet connection that I was paying for for live feeds. Insane money, insane amount of money. Every 10 years, things become more accessible. And what's going to happen when there's something called the bottom billion? 
in the world, there's still a billion people that still don't even have cell phones. When those people get cell phones and they want to get out of their country's declining value dollar or whatever it is, where do you think they're going to do it? Do you think they're going to buy gold? Do you think they're going to buy precious metals? I mean, any other precious metal, gold, I mean, whatever, diamonds, whatever it is. Do you think they're going to buy stocks in America? Do you think they're going to buy real estate in America? If you're making $5 a day, are you going to buy real estate in America? Are you going to, are you going to buy bonds from America? Or are you going to buy crypto? I was teaching this summer. I had kids in the South Bronx buying $5 of crypto and borrowing $3. So imagine that power in another country where people make $5 a day and now they can invest that $5 into crypto and that $5 turns into $15. Eventually they're in a much better position versus everything else I said is really mostly only accessible to people in America like us. There's a billion people about to come online that never have, act, have act, had access to any of this. Where are they going to go with their money? You tell me, I, I think it's going to be crypto, right? What's the other option for them? I just told you, can they buy stock? Can they buy real estate in America? Probably not. Can they buy bonds in America? I don't even know how they would do that. Can they buy stocks in America? Yeah. I'm, I don't know if there's a Robin Hood in poor country, A, B, or C, maybe. Precious metals. This is what. Right now, they do in, in poor countries. So in India, for, for instance, when they make money, they instantly turn it into gold over there because they want out of their currency because they know the currency goes down in value. Another big thing I, I realized a couple of days ago, I go to buy something and I'm like, damn, I remember when that used to cost a lot less. Like I'm talking about ridiculously less, right? Like pack of gum. Actually, I think it was a Halls. I, I bought a Halls and it was $2. And I was like, yo, I remember when I was like 50 cents, right? But again, why do you think that happens? And and what, what it hit me is it's supposed to always go up. Why? Because inflation is always going to make things cost more money over time. So stop complaining about inflation because it's there, it's built into the system on purpose to get people to spend money. What rich people do is they take it out of the value dropping of the dollar and they put it into things that go up in value like stock, real estate, bonds, right? Instead of being in a thing that's going down, it's going up. Whatever percent that is, is up to you. So like I said, real estate is like this. Bonds is like this. Stocks are like this. Crypto is like this, right? Precious metals are like this. Okay. But now if you could compound that, which one do you want to compound? You want to compound here, 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 or here, right? And this is where crypto has the highest potential. And we still haven't even seen most of the people get into it yet. All this trading has been with less than 5% of the global population. And literally every single person in the globe is going to have access to crypto and be able to buy it in the next 10 to 20 years. Again, Everybody does have access to gold, but you tell me, go find a place to buy gold. I want to hear the comments. Tell me what your journey was to go find and buy gold. Good luck with that. Bonds, stock, all that too. I, I'm, I, I really want people to challenge me on my thinking here, but pretty set with it. Like if you are not already rich, I don't think you have a choice. I really don't like of course, if you get into real estate, hope you do it. But how are you going to get into it? it? You know, right now, people are losing their jobs left and right. So if during this recession, you want to figure out a way to put your money to come up the best. Real estate, I don't know if you're going to get approved. If you ain't got a job, right? Your credit might be hit a little bit because you're missing some payments. You're going to go find gold, buy gold. I've had people hit me up like, yo, can I buy gold? I want to keep the store of the value. And I'm like. I don't even know, to be honest. I got to ask my mom because she works in the diamond and jewelry district. She maybe knows somebody. 
And she did. She gave me somebody. You got to go to Wall Street. And uh, it's, it's a whole thing. Um, bonds. I don't even, I can't even tell you how to buy bonds right now. I'm sure I could Google it and find it, but I don't really know. I haven't done it and I won't do it. Um, but I know people that have done it. Stocks. Yeah. You could, you could download one of these apps, um, Robin hood, whatever. Real estate. I just told you, you gotta, you gotta get, I'm going to did stock bond, precious metal. Uh, let's say the question. Yeah. And then crypto, you know, you got the apps, you got, you know, um, Coinbase, Coinbase is available in most places and whatever country you're in, they have a crypto app that you can use. So it's just connect your bank account, buy the crypto. If you want to store it the safest, send it offline to a um, decentralized wallet. And that's what I really believe most people are going to end up doing. And I don't, part of why I'm creating this content, I create the courses I'm creating, I'm creating the software I create is because there's never been the possibility for a person who makes sub $10 a day to be able to invest in assets that are growing 100% a year on average. That's possible right now. And the fact that you can borrow against the crypto, this is where the term retire your bills came from. I'm showing people how to use their bill money to borrow off of it, pay their bills, and still buy crypto. And again, Hoping that the, the, the growth grows. It's going to slowly come down. Everything does. But right now, still going up pretty fast every year. It's down this year. But when you look historically, you can't look at one year at a time. This is why it takes years to build wealth. There's no get-rich-quick schemes. Even with real estate, it takes years. right? When you buy a real estate property, it doesn't double in value in one year. It takes 10, 20, 30 years to double in value depending on where you buy it, right? So you got you to gotta understand all asset classes and start coming up with your own strategy of how you plan on making the money you make grow for you. And this is why I'm saying, I really don't think you got a choice. Crypto is going to be the best place, even if you just take it to do the bill thing, and then you use the rest of your money to put it in stocks. Because yes, there are risks. Let's, let's talk of the risk because I know sometimes I go too much on the pros. I haven't really told you any risk on crypto. The cons on crypto is the market drops very fast sometimes, right? We've seen it, you know, whatever. Other con, it's not easy. You can't just wake up tomorrow and understand all this. You got to put in some time to understand. You got to educate yourself. That's a challenge. Some people don't want to do that. They don't want to spend that time. Nah, you know what? That's not for me. That's for people like you. Okay. You work every day. What do you think? You're in the game with me. You just don't know how the rules are. You don't know the rules. You're working for a value that keeps going down. So if you don't put that money somewhere else, you're never going to be able to retire. You're going to have to work to the day you die. And I watched this prime, this, um, this documentary from, uh, I think it was, uh, Channel 13, it was talking to people who were not even that old. Like I'm talking about like 30s, early 30s. And they were talking about their retirement plans. And even they were saying, look, I'm doing the calculation. I don't even know how I'm going to retire. I don't really see how I'm going to retire. And this is a 30-year-old, right? So if you're younger than 30, yeah, you have opportunity to, to get into things that may give you the ability to compound. Let's get back to the, to the cons of crypto. The government does not like crypto. Guess why? <laughs> it's doing all the things that it that the government does not like, right? Because the government has this system that helps the government achieve its goals. Crypto is outside of that system and it's outside of every government's system. So governments are not going to like that, right? They want you to have to deal with their rules and their currencies. The fact that there's this new thing that operates in the cold world and there's nobody that can stop it, they're not really happy about that. So they're going to regulate it. There's not many rules yet. So yes, rules can come down later that end up changing the way this works, but that's the gamble, right? At the end of the day, it's early. So when those rules come into play and everybody's finally not 
that's worried and they put their money in, who's going to benefit? The people that put in now while it was risky. You know, that's how it works. When you invest in something, if you invest during the risky time and it works, you get the best reward. High risk, high reward. So it's risky because there's no government um, rules yet. There's some, but there's not enough. It is a technical hurdle to be able to move it around. Yes, it's not, you know, holding gold, but it's not super easy yet. It's not that hard, but it's not easy. Price fluctuation. Because there's so little bit of money in it still, there's big players that could shift the price very easily. Because to them, a trillion dollars is nothing, a billion dollars is nothing. They could buy and sell to make the price come down and scare people into selling, all kind of stuff, right? So that's the real risk of crypto, right? Like, I do not see the risk of it ever going away, though, because what would it have? What would have to happen for it to go away? We would just have to stop using it because it's not going to disappear, because it, it's on code on millions of computers across the world. The internet will have to go out across the whole entire world for crypto to disappear. So is that a risk? No. I, I, I mean, yes, the world could end, but then you got you got bigger problems than your, your money, right? The laws, I cannot see how the government or every government around the whole entire world bans it. There's already countries that are using it as legal tender. El Salvador, there's more signing up every day. So worst case scenario, you can only use it to turn it into more money in another country like that. Still, it's going to be worth more than it was before you bought it, right? Okay. Um, what else? Some also, any cons? Anybody can think of any cons? Let me know. Any comment anywhere? DM anything. But we think about the main cons. The, the price goes up and down, but over time it goes up. They say nobody has ever lost money holding Bitcoin and Ethereum for less than four or five years. I think it's four years. So again, I say this a lot. I make content around this. If you're investing, but don't expect to hold the investment for more than five years, you're really gambling. Nobody does that with real estate unless they're trying to flip the real estate property, but that's a gamble. People lose money on that all the time. If you're buying stocks for less than five years, it's a gamble. You can buy and sell in the wrong time. Most times stocks, if you buy the right ones, you buy the S&P 500, which is all top 500 companies, they tend to go up over five year, five year. Actually, I don't know five year, maybe 10 year on stock. Precious metal, same thing. They, they tend to hold their value, not really grow, but hold the value. So everything else is going down. It stays with the same value. That's why you see people buying watches, expensive watches, gold watches, right? They they not only have the precious metal in them, but they also scarce, right? And that that creates the value. Um, bonds again, bonds are this thing where you're lending money to the government. And they're gonna, but if that country goes out of business, you're screwed on those bonds because you're not getting your money back. Right, because what happens with a bond is you put that hundred thousand in, they have your hundred thousand, they give you four thousand dollars a month, and then at, I mean year, and then at the end of it, they give you a hundred thousand back. But if that country goes out of business, you ain't getting a hundred thousand back. So there's risk there too. With crypto, you can lose if you if you leverage too much. I, it happened to me. I, I over leveraged, and when the market dropped, they took they didn't take all of it though. They only took a third of that coin specifically. And through code, because this is all code, you can create methods to protect that. And I've already done it. I'm doing it right now. It's all day, every day, protecting my stuff. So where's the real risk? That the world doesn't use this already? Only 5%, less than 5% of the world is using it. But again, go across the globe. What is their option? If you're a poor person... What is your option? I don't think I don't think they have options. And I think in a lot of ways, most Americans are poor. 
Of course, it's not poor on a global scale, but they're not, they have to work to the day they die. There's a stat right now where they're saying 40% of Americans are not investing at all and no assets. 60%, 50, 60% do not even have $500 of emergency savings. So what does that mean? That's that's pretty worrying, right? That's that's pretty poor. If you don't have $500 emergency money, that means something can happen in your life and you're poor, right? One thing just needs to happen. And there's even another stat. I got to look these up. I, I'll get the exacts and I'll post them all the time. There's even another stat that says a certain percentage of people are one, one accident or something away from being poor. So like, Here's an example. Let's say you make a good salary, make 100K a year, and you get some type of illness that your insurance doesn't cover. You're broke. You're poor. Because the fees is going to cost to help you with whatever sickness or accident, you're not going to be able to cover them with the, the income you make. So, so there's another, I'm going to look that one up too. But this is what I mean. Like when you think about it, are anybody watching whenever you watch, are you an accident illness away from being poor? I, I know I am definitely hundred percent. Um, what's up Jasper? Um, so this is where, this is where like I look at this and I think these developers tried to solve all the problems. They kind of did. All that's missing right now is all these all these financial people are trying to scare the world away from this system. Why do you think that is? Because they make all their money in the old system. And they don't control this system. So they, they don't want you buying something that they make no money on. But guess what they are doing? While they keep scaring you, they're buying it. They're like, yeah, no, don't buy that. Because they know eventually when you go in, when you go in, they'll make their money. But they're still scaring you against it. Do you do trading? Good question. Not really. I did for a little while, but I realized what it was. Gambling. If you trade, you're gambling day to day that you have the right information that the market just does do some crazy thing on you. And I was doing it pretty well, but I was doing it during a bull run. And once the bull run ended, if you're still trying to make a living off trading, it's much harder because the, the, the ups and downs are not there anymore for you to make money because what is trading? Trading is you buy here, you sell here. So if the market is here, you buy, let's say it's $100, and then in one day, it goes to $500, you sell and you make $400. But if the market is going from $1 to $2, you got to be like buying by the minute to get to anything. And that's not even possible for a human. It's possible for a robot. But again, even those things, if there was a robot that could trade and it was perfect, trust me, BlackRock and these multi-trillion dollar companies will have it. They do have AIs that do trades for them, but even for them, it's not working that much because if it did, they would just own the whole world. You know what I mean? Like, so yes, it works for them. It works better than me and you. We're working for our dollars, but for them, they're they're earning it through trading. So it does work somewhat better than what we have to do. But I don't think there's a holy grail to trading. I think trading is gambling. And yes, I've, I've made some good trades in my life, like seriously good trades, but I knew what happened. It was, I was in Vegas and I, I lucky got the right number. I'm not some special trader guy. When you look up the best traders, they're all gamblers. They're all poker players. They're all people that are willing to take risk with money. And a lot of times they lose. You hear about their wins. You don't hear about their losses, but all these rich guys, they all have major losses, but they're gamblers. So they're willing to let it ride and stuff like that. 
and you only hear about their wins. It's like your friend that's a gambler that he always tells you when he wins. He never tells you when he loses, right? It's gambling. That's why I'm saying if you long-term invest and you say, all right, I'm going to hold this for five years because I know in five years it should be up. The problem with that normally for most people is I can't hold something for five years. I need money. If I put $100,000 of Bitcoin, if you even have that, and two years from now I need to do something, I need to sell that stock. But here's where with Bitcoin or crypto, I don't need to sell it. I can borrow off of it. Do what I got to do, either pay it back or just hope continues to grow over time. Just keep putting more in to, to keep growing it. And that's the kind of stuff that's possible. And again, I know it's not easy, but I'm telling you, everybody here, everybody watching, we all need to make money. We need to work to make money. But if you're not learning how to make that money, make you more money, you're going to have to work to the day you die. I don't want that for you. I definitely don't want everybody to have to do that. I personally am probably going to do that because I like what I do. I love doing this stuff. But most people do not like their job and they want to retire like right now. But again, they got no plan to do it. And they don't make enough to invest in a Wall Street property, <laughs> you know. So what is your options? I'm telling you, crypto is one of the best things that has happened to you and you don't even know it if you haven't realized it. Take the time. Go down the, the crypto rabbit hole. Go on YouTube. What is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? What is Miguel talking about leverage? What is the dollar? Like you should really understand this. It's not only for finance people. If you make money from a job, you are in the game. You just don't know the rules. Learn the rules to the game. We all wake up every day to play. If you don't want to learn that. Nothing I could do for you. But the truth is, still, just put a couple bucks in Bitcoin and in Ethereum if you can. And if you want more and more to understand this stuff, start spending the time. I'm telling you, spend the time. It, it's Every year you do not put in the time to understand it, you are having to work more years of your life. That's the sad part. And the truth is, we just got a do-over. We saw what was possible and everything came back down. So now if Bitcoin and Ethereum just go back to the prices they were, talking about two, three X your money, not many places you could do that. You put money in the stock market right now, not many places you could two, three X it. Bitcoin and Ethereum alone, you could two, three X your money. Who knows how long, but even if it's 10 years, not many places again. You could two, three extra money in 10 years. Real estate, you can't do that. Stock, you can't do that. Precious metals, you can't do that. Bonds, you can't do that. So even if it takes crypto 10 years to come back, you're still, you're still beating all of the other asset classes. And you can borrow off of it. Somebody asked, where you recommend to invest? I, again, what are you investing in? If you're investing in crypto, I'm in New York. One of my, I, I really much, pretty much have Coinbase and Gemini. Those are the only two options that, that I'm allowed to. <laughs> and as another thing, the banks are keeping us in a place where we can't even do it as much as other places can. And that should give you a little bit of a warning of what, why, right? Like, People don't like competition. Businesses don't like competition, especially when that competition literally does everything that you do for cheaper and there's nobody that they can go to and be like, hey, you're you're doing this. This is all decentralized. So nobody, there's nobody you go to, to to be like, hey, Bitcoin CEO, what's going on? Even Ethereum, I know a lot of people think Vitalik is the CEO. He's not. He's decentralized. He created it. He's part of the people who vote on what happens, but he doesn't run it. He, he doesn't run it. He gives ideas and the community votes on what happens. That would be nice if we could go to a bank and say, hey, we think you should do this. They're going to they're gonna laugh in our face, right? With crypto, that's how it works. The community decides what happens. So Ethereum, for instance, that, that, that 
thing where Ethereum starts to drop in amount over time, that was a community vote. Bitcoin, they vote on stuff all the time. Well, they have voted on stuff and they decide to keep it how it is because they want to keep that store of value. Again, there's a risk there. Things can be voted and changed. But why would everybody who owns it vote to make it worse? That just doesn't make sense to me. Again, I could be wrong, but if we're all voting on the best thing to do for all of us, are we all going to choose to do the worst thing? No. What about Binance? I'm in New York and in America, Binance, I can't use Binance. Um, so I've never used it, but also I just know Binance is a Chinese company or is it a Chinese company? Um, I kind of think it's a Chinese company. It may not be. I don't trust it as much as Coinbase. Coinbase is SEC regulated, publicly traded company. Binance is in some other country. I think it's based in Canada, but I think it has a lot of ties to China. So I don't recommend, I couldn't recommend Binance. I've never used it. Um, I'm more of a Coinbase, send it off into the centralized finance world. And I'd rather work on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, QuickSwap. Um, those are the main two I use. Um, but decentralized exchanges mean they're they're like no nobody's holding your money, no no company. It's it's all again the community voting on what's gonna happen with that platform. Um, I use Ave, Ave A A V E. That's where I take out my loans. That's where I put. The, the money to gain interest, um, and I also trade on Aave. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that to me, when you think about all the pieces, stock, real estate, bonds, precious metals, I don't see how they grow more than crypto. I don't see it. And when it comes time to use them for something else, you're most likely going to have to sell it and pay taxes. Crypto, you can borrow off of it, not pay taxes, and continue compounding the value. So when you add those things up, I don't really see a better option. Hopefully you take me up on that and you start paying attention and looking. And sign up for retireyourbills.com. Go to retireyourbills.com. I'm going to keep the content coming out around this. I'm going to send an email all the time about what's going on. Um, the first Retire Your Bills cohort has, is going to start next week. Um I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on when the next one will start if you want to join it. Uh, but it's an amazing time to start understanding this stuff. I'm telling you, I don't think we're going to get another. I think this is, a, this is how I'll end it. Every generation has their thing. And if you look at the richest people, they all jumped on the new thing of their generation. So in the 1920s, 1900s, it was the stock market. Then it became real estate. Real estate and stock market, similar time-ish around. Then the stock market really exploded around a certain time in the 80s because of the technology boom, right? If you miss those times, this crypto thing, I believe is our generation's thing. It's up to you to figure that out and decide if you believe that. But do you really believe in the 1950s, you could buy a house for, for 12 grand and now it's worth a million. You're going to buy this million dollar home now and think it's going to turn into 12 million? You got to have that million. Back then, 12 grand was nothing. They could get 12 grand, right? Now, it's very hard to buy things like that. It's hard to buy the stocks because they're they're high now. Amazon is $1,000 a share. Apple, you know, they, they do the splits, but it's, it's expensive. Real estate is expensive. Crypto, when you hear 30000 for Bitcoin or twenty five or whatever it is, you're like, wow, that's expensive. Ethereum, wow, that's expensive. But when you think about the fact that less than 5% of the world owns it, and literally every person in the world is can own it right now. They just don't understand it. And once that bottom billion gets on the internet, bottom billions, I think actually there's 2 billion people that don't have access to technology yet. 
what is the asset they most likely to get into? I think it's crypto, right? So now think about that 1500 per coin. When all those people start buying it, the value should go up. Why? Because Bitcoin has a finite amount and Ethereum's value goes down every time it's used. Guess what it's used on? Buying things, NFTs, which many people believe is going to be the biggest market place on the planet. Right? So what, what am I saying here? People all around the world are going to trade things on Ethereum. And every time they use Ethereum, it goes down in value. I mean, it goes down in amount that can be used. It should bring the price up. Again, do your own research. But I'm telling you, I'm doing research on every asset class. I do not see one that beats crypto. I don't see it. I want, I want the fight. I, I want, I want, the, <laughs> I want the action. Bring it to me. I want to see. I want to see if I can battle it out with people. Tell me gold. Yeah. All right. Buy, buy a hundred thousand dollars gold. Where you putting it? All right. Buy a property. You got the money right now. You got a good job. You got the good credit. Cool. You're already rich. It's not the same. Let's bring a person who's starting from nothing and see what option is best for them. I'm telling you, I don't see, I don't see a, right, a way around us all owning crypto. Hopefully that was a good um, explanation. If you have questions, DM, email, whatever you got to do, hit me up. I definitely think if you're starting out, you don't, you feel worried about retirement, please, please, please start going down the crypto rabbit hole. Have a good weekend.